Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve merge two sorted lists, leak code number 21. It's probably my favorite linked list question. So you're given the heads of two sorted linked lists, list one and list two. You need to merge the two lists into one sorted list. And this list should be made by splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. We'll talk about what they mean there. And our goal as usually in a linked list problem is to return the head of the merged linked list. Okay, so in this example here, we have list one is this red list and so list one would actually be a reference to the first node and we'd have list two is a reference to this first purple node. Note that they are both sorted in ascending order and our goal here is to return the sorted list. Now notice that they kept the colors here exactly the same as in here meaning that they are exactly the same nodes. So when we have a purple one here well that means this node and this node are literally the same. So we're not allowed to make a copy of a node with a value of one and then just put that there at the beginning. No this first node has to actually be, well, since it's a one, you could choose either one of these, but you have to have it as the actual node, the same node that they already had. So when the nodes are the same, we can have either one of those. So red one, then purple one, those would both be fine. But here, after the two ones, we definitely need the red two because that's the next one in order. That's then got to point to the three and then either of the fours is fine. So as long as you have the same sorted order here and you're not creating duplicates of nodes, you're actually using the same nodes in memory, then that's what you got to do. As usual with the linked list questions, they have some silly edge cases where yes, both of your lists are allowed to be basically none. It is basically saying both of your pointers are null. And in that case, you would again return null because there's nothing to return. Okay, so suppose list one, which I'm gonna call L1 is a reference to this node and L2 is a reference to this node. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new node and I'm calling it D because it's basically a dummy node. Now, this is normally where we plug in the value of the node, except the value is not really important to us here. You could think about it as a value of zero or whatever. It's basically just this dummy node where it's going to be the fake head of our list. So it's going to be the start of our list, except it's not actually the real beginning of of our list, it's basically the fake head. Okay, so that means that the real head is actually gonna be stored at dummy.next. Now, after we create that node, we need one more pointer, which is a pointer C. And C is going to point to the dummy at first. And what it's going to do here is in a loop. So everything we do now here is in a loop. We basically just say, hey, what do we want to make the next part of the list? Or in this case, the beginning. Well, we always want the smaller value here. Okay, so here we'd want the one instead of the two because it's smaller. And if we were ever looking at values that were the same here, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. So by default here, we're just going to choose that we use list two's node if we happen to have the same value. So we'd ask, which do we prefer, list one's value or list two's value? And we'd prefer list one's value. So we set cur.next equal to list one. Okay, so that says the next part of our list is going to be list one. Now that we've pointed that over, we actually do two things. We set cur to be L1 and we move L1 to be L1 next. So cur is always going to be kind of the end of our list, the thing that we need to start pointing to the next element. And every time we move it, we're going to move the list over. So if we get L1, we move L1 over. And if we used L2, then we'd move L2 over. Okay, so we ask the exact same question. Would we prefer L1, which happens to have a value of three in this case, or would we prefer L2, which has a value of two? We would prefer L2 because it's smaller. And so we set cur.next equal to be L2. And in that case, we then set cur to be L2 and we move L2 to be L2.next here. Okay, it's the analogous thing that we just did, except for list two. Okay, so we ask this question again, would we prefer three or would we prefer three? Well, we don't really care. So by default, we're just gonna choose L2. And so basically we just kind of rewrite this connection here. We'd set cur.next over to be L2 and we would set cur over to be L2 and we'd set L2 to be L2.next. Okay, see how it's just shaping this order here. Now I'm gonna do this a little bit faster because it's literally the same thing. We'd end up pointing to this because we're just comparing threes again. We choose L2 again, so we'd rewrite this connection and we would set cur.next to be l2 we'd set cur to be l2 l2 to be l2.next and now i'm going to stop saying every single step but basically just to draw it here cur.next is going to end up pointing to l1 we are going to move cur over and we'll move l1 over in this case we would prefer this four over that four and so we're going to remove this connection and we're going to draw cur.next over to be l2 i know it looks kind of funny here but the pathway still works and then oh check this out l2 
goes to l2.next, which is none. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, we need this to be the sorted list of them combined. We'll notice that we can actually simply just do this, okay? We can actually just point cur.next over to be l1 because this stuff is already gonna be sorted and it's gonna be placed in the right spot because we did everything up until there correctly. So really the rest of the list is just l1. And notice that even if l1 here actually didn't even exist, well, we could even still point cur.next to be l1. This is still the right thing to do because then we can just say, okay, well, it's going through here. Here's our list. And then boom, it's actually going to point to none or null. And that is what you'd want. That's how you end a linked list. So we're going to see in code how to do that cleverly. And it's a very elegant solution. Okay, so the first thing is to make our dummy node, which I'm going to call D is equal to just a list node. That's basically just calling the constructor for this class they have up here. I know it's written as a comment, but yes, that is a class you can actually use. And so a node has a value and a next. Now by default here, you see in the init function, it actually by default sets the value to be zero and the next to be none. So this version of the constructor is actually totally fine. This just makes a node with a value of zero. We really don't care about the value because it's just a dummy node. And also the next is going to be none, which we're going to overwrite the next very shortly anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we will also get a pointer, which we are calling cur. I'm gonna write it as cur. That is going to point to the dummy node. So what we wanna do here is while we have list one and we have list two here, while both of those are valid nodes, if list1.val is less than list2.val, that means we want to connect to list one. And so we're gonna set cur.next equal to list one. Notice that on the very first iteration here, that actually points the dummies next to be basically the head. But carrying this on, cur.next is equal to list one. We'd have cur is equal to list one. And we have list one is equal to list one dot next. Okay, but otherwise we are left in the case that either list two is smaller or it's that they're equal. And so when they're equal, we don't really care. This is the situation we're going to point or connect to list two. So we'll set cur dot next equal to list two. We would want to set cur over to be list two. And then we'd want to move list two over. So list two is equal to list two dot next. Okay, so now after we get out of this loop here, we are in the scenario where we don't have this anymore. So that means that we're either missing list one or we're missing list two or we're missing both of them. And it turns out you can actually satisfy everything here with just setting cur.next equal to be list one if you have list one, otherwise you wanna set it to be list two. So the reason that this works is saying, okay, well, let's assume we have list one still. Well, that's in the visualization exactly. You just kind of connect up like we did before. Uh, but if you don't have list one, say that you have list two. Well, okay, that's kind of the analogous thing. You just point the rest of the list to be list two. That's also fine. But you could also have the scenario where we don't have list one and we don't have list two. So what that would do is saying you'd have if list one, this would be false because you don't have list one, it's going to be false. And so you'd fall in the else that would end up pointing cur.next to be list two. But if we don't have list two either, well, that's setting currents next to be list two which is none. Well, there's really nothing more for the list to be. And so you're just kind of redundantly setting next to be none again, and that's totally fine. Okay, so then as we said, all we really have left here is to return d.next because our actual head is stored at the dummies next because again, cur was initially pointing to this dummy node and then we started adjusting currents next. So the real head is stored at dummy.next and if we run this, that should work. Okay, so let's look at the time and space complexity of this. So the time complexity is, well, with most linked list questions, it, they're pretty much all O of n because you usually don't have to run through the list a variable number of times. We are doing while we have list one and we have list two, our main code is going to run. And then this stuff is really just constant. So this loop is basically going to at most run through list one and list two. If we say that n is the length of the longer list here, there's no way we're gonna run this for more than basically two n times. Say that if we ran this all through both lists, then that's gonna be two n, which is equivalent to O of n. So really we're just going to say that this runtime is big O of n as it usually is. And this space complexity complexity here. Uh, again, with linked list questions, you rarely have to store more than constant things. We're storing a dummy node. That's fine. We're storing some variables. That's also fine. This is all just O of one or constant space. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. Have a great day and bye-bye.